please give a warm welcome to executive producer and director Mimi Leader. Of course, my goodness. Thank you for being here. And you were watching uh, the episode with the audience. Yeah. What do you think? Well, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, I've never seen it on the big screen. I've seen it about a thousand times on. Which you know, actually small leads to my first question. Um, your film, your, this show is so cinematic when you direct it. Thank you. Um, you know, it, it, I'm amazed about the cinematography and the look of the. Was that always your intention for it to bridge between film and TV? Yeah. Um, I, I never look at my approach to film and television is not different. It's always the same approach. I don't say this is on the big screen, this is on the small screen. Um, the only thing that might be different is the film ratio, you know. But we shoot this in two to one, and so it's bigger and wider. And yeah. When I introduce, I mentioned that you were you have been involved from be the beginning. Um, you directed the pilot, so you're responsible for the whole look of, of the of the show. Can you tell us about um, first reading the the novel, Top of the Morning, and your take on the on the show? Well, you know, Top of the Morning by Brian Stelter was really the stepping off point of this is the world. And then we went to New York with my production designer and we, you know, went to the Today Show and went to Good Morning America and really saw how they do it. You know, their control room, all the wires and the ceilings, the rooms are tiny. And we built very tiny sets and I kept saying, make them bigger <laughs> so we can shoot in them. And... Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> no, it's about developing the look. Yeah. What I, I notice is that there is three worlds. You have the one in front of the camera, you have the one behind the camera in the studios, but then there are private world, and there are three very distinct looks. Yes, well, you know, I wanted, you know, I, I've always been fascinated with what's behind the camera, what's pull the curtain back, and let's see the awfulness and the real. And so I wanted in front of the camera, as they, as they actually do it, to be very bright and very happy and very welcoming. You wake up to these people and you're gonna have a great day. And then the show is over and then we go into the complexity of our characters and we see all the flaws, we see all the darkness, we see all the shadows. And so I wanted it to have a I wanted it to be like walking into shadows and light, and I wanted it to also be very saturated with color and have a lot of contrast, mm -hmm. because um, these characters are very complex, and I wanted the color palette to reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. I also noticed that, that backstage and in their personal world, you introduce handheld camera. It's not, it's not overly used, but it, it, to me, what I read is that uh, they're, they're, when their lives seems to be unraveling, yeah. I notice that you use handheld camera. Can you tell us about that approach? Well, that's exactly it. I very much, you know, first season, I shot it in a far more classical way. And, and then as their characters and their flaws came out and the stories got more complex, I brought handheld in more because I felt it helped to give us that uneasiness. Uh, it, it gave us this edgy feeling, but not in a handheld, you know, jerky way, just kind of put you off your guard a little bit, you know, just something's up here, what is it? Mm -hmm. And you also, I love the aspect that you go wide uh, but then also the camera zooms in, but it, like super close. And then the most emotional moments, like the opening sequence of this um, episode, where Reese is having a breakdown through the, the through the doorway, yeah. and the camera is right on her face, and we we feel everything that she's going through. Can you tell us about that choice? 
Yeah, well, again, I brought handheld into that, and I'm glad you noticed. I like to do these very big, wide shots with long lenses, and I like to get right in there. And because, you know, as they say, the, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. <laughs> and it's true, and your camera can get way in there, and it's really great watching it on the screen because, on the big screen, because it always felt that way to me, even on the small screen. So it, it, uh, translated, I think, very well. I mean, I th and then you noticed, and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, the style. Um, yeah, you know, that window was really great because it, the glass was very, you could just see kind of shadows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I almost never, I was gonna shoot it in one shot and never go out, never go in. But I did, and I'm glad I did. But you know, you have these feelings when you're shooting and you go, no, I don't need it. Then you uh, second guess yourself and say, no, I need it. And when you're in the editing room, you're really glad, you know, that you said, okay, I needed it. And do the actors, are they bothered by the fact that the camera is right up to No, <laughs> they're pros and I use a lot of long lenses when I when I do shoot these close-ups, and so the camera's farther away, because there's a greater depth of field. And no, they're just, uh, this cast is extraordinary. As you can see, they're, they're masters. Mm -hmm. of the, they're just so into, into their characters. And you know, it's really interesting when you do a pilot, you know, nobody really knows, you have an idea of what you're doing. You have an idea of who you are. And then you step into those shoes and you know you slowly develop the character and um, every single one of them. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary. It's a, it's a gift actually going to work every day. Um, one of the things I've always admired about you is that you are a cinematographer but you're also a director. Now, have you always felt that that's your secret weapon is that you can direct but at the same time cinematically um, camera, you know what to do. You know what the look of the film should be. Yeah, well, I went to AFI and I studied cinematography. And yeah, I, first woman to be a uh, <laughs> graduate of AFI. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it uh, was um, a great experience, honestly. And I grew up in, in, in a film household. My father, Paul Leder, actually won the Santa Barbara Film Festival in 1990, <laughs> Best of the Fest, uh, a small film with Vivica Linfords and Cleavon Little called Going to Chicago. So it's really wonderful and strange to be here with my sister <laughs> and my husband and wow. my family. Um, anyway. Um, season one was all about the Me Too movement. Yeah. Season two was about COVID. This Season three is it's got, it's so dense. It's got, of course, women's autonomy. It has the the search for the truth. Um, it also journalism and the how important journalism is. Can you navigate us about all the different themes that you yeah. are? Well, you know, we we knew we wanted to tackle abortion rights, and actually, the studio is really the network was very scared to do it, and we forced the issue and we just did it. And um, then Roe v. Wade was overturned. And it's just so interesting and pressing how- But you guys happened. were planning all of this before. Yes, that was, all before. So you were, you were prescient. Yes. And, you know, journalism uh, is under fire everywhere around the world. Uh, truth is an endangered species, it seems mm. <laughs> to be. And it felt really important to talk about uh, what is the truth, and we all see it very differently. And um, we are a new show, so we can do that and see it through our characters' eyes. And it's, uh, it's actually, uh, it was very challenging. It's very challenging, it's a very dense show, as you just said, to weave all those things and have them work. And sometimes they don't work, mm -hmm. but most of the time they seem to. It's the season's been loaded with story and plot this season. And John Hamm walked in the room and, and did a great job. Um, I mean, super handsome. Um, <laughs> nah. Um, 
the, how did you navigate the studio and that wanting you to deal with the Roe versus Wade? There's a studio person here, I know it. Um, anyway, we, you know, we just spoke to them and said this is a really important story to us, an important story of our times, and we want to write about it and tell stories about it. And mm -hmm. We had set it, Carrie Aaron had set it up in the first season with Bradley on air spilling that she had an abortion at age 15. So it was all the little breadcrumbs that writers write that you pick up and then you, you know, say, ah, oh, what's season three going to be about? And then you, you know, go back to those um, little gems and develop your stories. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about that you're dealing with really dense subjects, but the film is, the, the, I keep calling it a film, the TV show is highly entertaining. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how do you navigate between the drama and entertainment and also comedic moments in the show and you seamlessly jump between the, yeah. two, the two, three worlds. Well, that's really hard. It honestly is, you know, when we did the pilot, it was like, I, um, you know, broadcast news and network were the two films that were the, this is what the show is. And I did a mood board and, you know, put lots of, you know, pictures, frames that I loved from those movies, from lots of movies, uh, as to what the show, this is what the show is going to look like, this is the tone. And you'd walk into the room, and after we did the season, we were like, hey, it looks like the mood board. But uh, that, those shows, those movies, so walk those lines between high drama and high comedy. And it's a very fine line to, to walk, because it can really fail. It can be ridiculous. I mean, this show is kind of ridiculous. You know, it's kind of over the top, and, but it's very grounded in reality. You know, these people are very highly paid, the mm -hmm. characters and, and the actors. And <laughs> <laughs> but they're kind of ridiculous, very privileged people. And it's hard to care about those kind of people. Mm -hmm. And I think we do, because they're human. And uh, so walking that line between, re, you know, high comedy and or comedy. You know, the best drama has comedy. Mm -hmm. Best comedy has drama. Right. Yeah, they helped each other. Yeah. Um, the actors. Uh, you have Jennifer Aniston, John Hamm, Reese Witherspoon. What is it like for you to be handling this incredible talent? Well, they're, they're loads of fun, and they're very serious, and they're very smart, and they come in very prepared, and uh, we work the scenes just like we would any movie, any, any scene that we would want to, you know, you put it on the floor, you put it on its feet, you discover it. I don't like to rehearse very much at all. I, Why is it that I, you I don't, don't like to set anything. I want it to happen. I mean, we rehearse on, you know, we rehearse when we are, we're, rehearsing the scene to get it up on its feet. I meant we don't, I don't rehearse beforehand mm -hmm. because I don't like to rehearse, set something and have actors come to the set and feel they have to repeat that. I want them to find it in the moment. And that's the exciting part. You find mm -hmm. it in the moment and you capture it on screen. And in that moment you go, yeah, we got it. And that is the, you know, the joy of mm -hmm. making Films. Do they have an input of course. about uh, you yes, know, Yes, they have input. <laughs> you know, Jen Aniston and Reese Witherspoon are producers on the show, exec producers, and they have input and give notes on their stories and, and the, the, the big picture. And, you know, and they stay, they're very protective of their characters and they know what they're doing. And um, they're wonderful to work with, they all are. From the day player, you know, from the supporting cast, you know, you've got mm -hmm. Holland Taylor, you, you know, who's just, you know, when she walks on the set, you just, ah, you know, just can't believe it. And she's 80 years old and she doesn't miss a line. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of, you know, you're kind of waiting for her to fall apart. And then you, you then you say, oh God, Mimi, you're such an asshole to think that. Well, you know, and yeah, she's, uh, a, yeah. she's just brilliant. And they and they all are. They all bring something very special. I do notice that in the cast, you have a lot of 
uh, actors that come from the theater, including Holland Taylor, you have Billy Crudup. Is that an asset when you look at the cast list and the actors that are done? Yeah, I, mean, I feel that there's, the theater gives them this backbone and this experience like no other. And you know they bring that experience with them and their professionalism with them. Mm -hmm. um, they're all artists and they're all humans and they all want to do great. Yeah. And they're all scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're all, you know, they're everything. They're not, they don't come with any preconceived notions of how they, uh, of, of, the, of the result. Mm -hmm. You know, they stay with it. And, you know, they're in the moment. Um, you mentioned two of my favorite movies, Broadcast News and Network. In this episode that you all saw, now we can talk about it. You have a big tribute to Network yes. with Mark Duplass yes. Speaks Out. You know, tell us about, about writing that scene and directing that scene. Well, Charlotte Stoud wrote it, and she wrote it brilliantly. And, uh, you know, he was really revved up that morning because he had to do that speech. And as you can see, there's a lot of angles. So he, I shoot with a lot of cameras when we shoot those scenes on the newsroom set. You know, I have ped cameras, and there are five of them going. And I have three of our cameras going at the same time. And, you know, we, we use a lot of angles to achieve that feeling. And, and he did it about three times, and which is not a lot to get that performance. And he was spent. And, you know, we all knew it, that it was really funny. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some things cannot, you know, aren't as funny as they seem when you're shooting it. Sure, and that's the scary part. So it, I was so, uh, that's what I love sitting here tonight with all of you when you all responded to that scene, <laughs> because I've never heard anyone laugh at it before except myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how much of the, um, of the work you do, I mean, we've talked about you're responsible for the whole look of the show and the, the, the cinematography, and then you're directing. And then when it comes to editing, how much of the finessing of the show does it entail when you're editing? Quite a bit. A lot. You know, directors, um, per guild rules, only have four days to edit, do a, editor, a director's cut. Editors do their cuts. I think now with the new union rules that we have, it's a six days that uh, Carol Trussell can tell me that. Um, it's, um, and Sasha. <laughs> uh, it's now six days, which is nothing. It's you do a pass. It's so dense, the material. So when I'm directing, of course, I have a lot more days than that. You know, I, I actually, you know, do it in those days, and then I bring in my partners, Michael Ellenberg and Charlotte, and we get in the weeds and we go deep, deep. And um, I have great editors. Uh, when a visiting director is here, they're only here for the four days this season, next season six, and we work hard. And some of them, um, some of them don't come in so strongly as we see them on the air, it, mm -hmm. in meaning that it takes weeks and sometimes months to get a show in the shape that it should be in. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of hard work. It's, it's hard, mm -hmm. and it's, um, but it's worth it. You don't direct all the shows of the season. How do you choose which shows you're gonna direct? Well, I usually do the first two. We block shoot them, which means, you all know what that means, like, you're shooting them, and if you're in the same location, you're shooting from episode one and episode two on the same day, which is not great. Yeah, you're, so what show am I in? Okay, what's the arc? And you have to remind yourself of where the characters are. It's, a, it's very difficult. And I, I choose one in the middle, and I always shoot the finale. And if they were all written, I'd direct them all, but they're not all written, and now, you know, we are very behind in terms of what happened with the writer's right. strike. But, you know, we'll be, we're writing now. They're writing, they're figuring it out. And do you feel proprietary during the season where, like, somebody else is directing 
you know, parts of you out there, your baby. Yeah, some very much so. And, you know, we hire really great directors. So, you know, part of a producer's job is to hire really strong people and let them do their job and respect the work that they do. But sometimes... Then you go home and, and take Xanax and... <laughs> and drink. And drink. <laughs> and, you know, I'm on set often when... When, you know, I prep the directors, the visiting directors. I go over, you know, tone, we have tone meetings. This is what this is about. I, you know, it, it is a very, um, we prep our directors very thoroughly. Everything is done in prep. With a hammer. <laughs> right. <laughs> but everything is done in prep. Yeah. Um, so, first season, Me Too movement, second season, COVID, third season, women's autonomy, and other issues. But, any hint for third season? I mean, fourth season, fourth season. Fourth we're, we're, we're just like putting stuff in the pot now. It's gonna be exciting, but I couldn't possibly give you an ounce of it. Not uh, like a little? <laughs> I mean, they, they sworn secrecy. Yeah, you guys got to see this way ahead of time. That's amazing. Minimum Reese is coming back. Reese? Yes. Yeah, Reese is coming back. Okay, good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank being you here for tonight, me. everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.